gosh, guys, a tortoise. This is so cool, guys. I was trying to catch this this whiptail, and I noticed something. I realized it was a tortoise upside down. He looks like he looks like he's okay. I can't believe it. This is the first desert tortoise I've ever seen. A first for me. I'm just gonna let's pick him up, put him over here in the shade under this rock. You know, we found him upside down. He could have been like this for days. His eyes look kind of dried out. He's he's struggling for. He's uh, trying to. He's drinking. He's drinking the water. Yeah, he's trying to get some moisture in him. There's a the soil was all wet below where he was lying, as though he'd been you know losing water, leaking water, probably out of his mouth because he's upside down, head first. He toppled off a rock ledge. Yeah, I'm so glad I spotted him. Yeah, thank goodness for that, right? Look, look how moist this ground is. This tortoise has lost so much moisture. Probably fell off this rock right here. And we found him upside down, just kicking and flailing. Let's see if we can put some water in the cap of this thing. Yeah. Let's see if he can drink. I don't know if he can or not. This is curious to find out. Now these tortoises are endangered and you're not allowed to pick them up, but I say in this circumstance, this tortoise would have died. But look, if you look at his, his shell, look how many different little bands he has. This could be a very old tortoise. Do this and put it, that gives a good little spout. Did you? Does he need more water? Should I try? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have an idea. When we leave, maybe we should take water and pour it in this plastic bag. Dig a little hole, put the plastic bag like this. Alright, so we have a plan to try to save this tortoise. He's lost a lot of liquids and we don't feel that the water in this cactus is enough to keep him alive. So what we're gonna do, if you do the honors, it's technically it's littering, but it's We'll pick reason. it up next time. Yeah, we'll pick it up next time we come. And the plan is we're going to make a little hollow area back here for this tortoise to get some water when he feels up to it. This creature. We're going to just put it back up under here. Come here. All right, stay there, buddy. All right, he looks like he's just going to stay there and recover with this little water dish right there. I think he'll be okay. okay. This is the coolest creature I've come across here in Arizona. Definitely one of the coolest of the trip. That is awesome. This is the greater earless lizard. Like the zebra tail lizard, they have blue under their body. But unlike the zebra tail, the blue is not right behind the arm. It's in front of the back leg. And that's how you tell these guys apart. I'm guessing that the one that we caught earlier was a lesser earless lizard, and this is a greater, just because this one's way bigger than the one we caught earlier. I mean, the other one was probably that long. So now it's a tail length. This one's twice that. And they got really, really well camouflaged backs. These lizards are very, very common down in the washes, and they've got very, very small scales on their backs. And when, Look at that lizard. They are so pretty. They've got very, very, And like the zebra tail, they do have zebra-striped undersides of their tail. Only the the zebra striping doesn't extend to the top, whereas in zebra tail lizard it does. And when zebra tail lizards run, sometimes they hold their tails up in the air. So far, what I've seen of these guys, they don't. Like the lesser earless lizard have long toes for propelling themselves through the sandy environment. They've got pointy little noses for burrowing into the sand when it gets too hot. Um, pretty neat creature. I'm gonna show you guys just how fast they are. And these guys eat ants, lots of different little tiny creatures and their tails aren't particularly long. Where did this guy go? He's just going to take off really quick. There he goes. This guy is a common side box lizard. And I'm holding onto his arm like the other ones because they're very, very fast. And they're called common side box lizards because of that dark, dark mark there on the side. And he's got some blue and orange under his chin. He's got some blue spots on his back. I think that their under markings are really interesting. They've got several different morphs. Some of them are red, some of them are blue, some of them are yellow. And guy. it's obvious he's lost his tail and it's regrown again. Colorful there. 
and then suddenly it just gets drab. And that's where some predator probably nabbed it. This one's a male, like I said before. And this is the one I was really after. I caught a female earlier today. Very cool creature. All right. I'm not too scared of him. Oh, I got him. Yes. A zebra tail. All right, my first zebra tail of Arizona. And the reason I could tell it's a zebra tail as opposed to a lesser illness lizard is right behind the arm is the beginning of black stripes. And if it was an adult male, it'd be black and blue stripes right there by its arm, right where its hand's shadow is. And greater earless lizards, they'd be back here, right in front of the back leg. They are called zebra-tailed lizards because of that zebra tail, and when they're disturbed, they'll flash it at you, they'll move it around. The reason you can tell it's a zebra tail is it's got the stripes continued onto the, the other side of the tail. Greater earless lizards don't have that. And this guy has an ear. So you like the earless lizard, they have pointy little mouths for burrowing. Very, very good camouflage on the back. And it's actually staying pretty calm for us. These guys eat small creatures, ants, anything they can catch. And we've got the long toes, characteristic of zebra tails and earless lizards for running on sand. Got him. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I showed you guys a male mountain spiny. Here's a female. All right, so not nearly as colorful ow, as the male, but just as feisty. Doesn't actually hurt that bad. She's not going anywhere because she's on the news, so I can kind of open up. And she's lashed on my finger. This is the proper way um, to noose a lizard and then let them catch you guys. Oh, and she's not letting go. She's just biting down. Anyway, not nearly as much color, but she still has that characteristic uh, collar. Doesn't extend all the way to the back of the neck. Okay. And this is a mountain spiny lizard, and you can tell because on the males especially, there is white next to the black on the collar. She really seems to like my finger. And this is a mountain spiny lizard. And these lizards, he's not trying to bite me, are very, very pretty. Look at that color. They've got very, very beautiful colors on their belly, their sides, they've got those cool yellow scales. And on their back, they've even got blue. This is, and of course, they're spiny lizards, so he is very, very spiny. He's also got this collar right here in front of his arm. It doesn't go all the way back behind his neck, and I can tell he's a mountain spiny, I believe, because he's got some white next to the black on his collar. And this is a relative of the western fence lizard. Very, very western fence lizard-like face. Blue under his chin. A unique feature about this lizard is they even have some greenish coloration on their tail. In a total length, this lizard is probably about about 11 inches. This is the fourth mountain spiny lizard I've caught this trip. This one is definitely the most stunning colored. One of them I caught was a male that was black colored. And I noosed a very, very large, aggressive female early this morning. But this one, this is a very, very frequent rock dweller. However, you can also see them sometimes crawling around in the scrub um, along the bushes and whatnot. Nothing much bothers these lizards when they get to this size, besides rattlesnakes. Um, however, in terms of lizards, no, no other lizard species around here can harm them. There are several bird species that we eat this, including hawks, roadrunners, that sort of predatory bird. And there's many, many snakes, including coach whips, rattlesnakes, that sort of thing. But other I also like that this one has the blue on its back. This is the first one I've caught that's shown this coloration. And it's very different. I've been trying to catch one of these since I got in here in Arizona and you'll never believe how I caught it. First of all, this lizard chased this cricket out of a rock and I put the cricket on a stick and set my hand down. 
I put the cricket right next to my hand and the lizard walked up into my hand to grab the cricket and I caught the lizard. I've been trying to catch one of these for the past four days. This is some variety of whiptail. Look at that. This is, oh, he's pretty aggressive. He's trying to bite me. Um, they all seem to be about this size. Very, very small. Very, very cool. And I can't believe how I caught him. I just set my hand down and I put the cricket on the stick and I just showed it to the lizard and the lizard followed the cricket right into my hand. Not a very skittish lizard. But very, very cool. Bingo. Check this out, guys. It's a little male Tucson banded gecko. And he is so adorable. Um, he's got really beautiful colors. Look at his back there. And he's a male, and I can tell because he has spurs. Um, they're hard to see. They're right by his bottom. And he is very, very colorful. Shut off. And these geckos are like leopard geckos in that they have eyelids. A lot of geckos don't have eyelids. This is my very first gecko. And it's right here along this trail where a bunch of people go. And the spurs are right there by the base. You can kind of see against my skin color. But at the base of the tail. He is very cute. And these guys are mainly nocturnal. They eat insects. Um, I didn't think we were going to find one this trip, honestly. They're very cool little creature. I love this guy. Awesome. All right, well, let's keep looking. All right, so as my mom and I and my dad were walking down this hill, my mom noticed something that was really cool. Um, and it's this desert tortoise, dead desert tortoise shell. So this is the second sign of desert tortoise we found this trip. It's freshly killed. You can still see the scales in there. But it's, it's pretty, pretty neat. My mom said she found it upside down. So I'm, you know, I wonder if that means it was killed the same way that we rescued ours. If it fell on its back and then couldn't get it back up. Either way. It's a really cool find. I'm glad she noticed it. And we'll keep going down this wash. Hopefully we'll find a horn toad, leopard lizard, something. It's not looking good for chuck wallas right now. Uh, we scoured these hillsides, didn't find anything. Let's All keep right. going. And we're out here early this morning looking for collared lizards on this trail. And we found this horsefly impaled on this prickly pear cactus. It's possible a shrike or something put it here. But it looks like he flew in there and skewered himself. That is a bad way to go. Anyway, we're going to keep looking. Hopefully we'll find something. Very, very pretty little lizard. You turn him over, you can see he's got a green, greenish throat with a blue belly with almost white spotting on it. I can't get too close to the camera because then it'll put the shadow on it, but a different lizard for me Almost looks like a long tailed bush lizard. He's got different scale patterns than I'm used to. Pretty granular little scales. So, pretty cool little guy. I'm gonna go let him go now. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is the eastern collared lizard, a little female. Not quite as pretty as a male. Notice, notice the spotting on this lizard. That helps him stay camouflaged and no other lizard besides maybe a lucky Gila monster if it got really super lucky and managed to capture one. Fairly the top of the food chain. Look at those jaws. Dun 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 dun. Very, very cool. I love how yellow these arms are. It's very cool. Alright. I'd say it's time to let her go.